This year, behind the pride was fear. The disease, which is almost always fatal. A homosexual. He discovered last month that he has the AIDS virus. Fear and self-loathing in the 80s when an HIV AIDS diagnosis was a death sentence. An epidemic, a virus, when millions around the world died and misinformation and denials could kill. Sounding familiar? The coronavirus reaches British shores. I've just been yelled at by a passerby who says it's all a conspiracy. The world reacted to COVID very quickly. They did not to HIV. It's 1982 and Chris and his partner Robert are madly in love and planning the rest of their lives together. He was enormous fun. He was the kind of person who could make you feel like the only person in the world. Then came the devastating news that Robert was HIV positive. He's given two years to live from the virus the tabloids are calling the gay plague. You couldn't talk about it. Robert and I had bricks through the window. It was dreadful. Six years later and it's Christmas Day. I remember him walking in the front door and there was this like intake of breath. People hadn't been quite prepared for him looking like a skeleton. He um, managed to make it until New Year's Eve. And about nine o'clock he um, sat up in bed suddenly and hugged me. And I held him in my arms and that was it. It was all over. Robert died as a new dawn was coming. It's 1987. Princess Diana shaking hands with an AIDS patient is to become a milestone moment for millions living with HIV. It couldn't happen to me. It, it, not on the planet, according to everything that we had been told at the time. Yvonne had always believed straight people couldn't get the virus. I got the diagnosis, the nurse looked at me and said, are you OK? And I just said, yeah, I was expecting a death sentence. I was just thinking, so when am I going to die? And that was it. One in three HIV positive people in the UK are women, but you rarely hear their stories. There wasn't anywhere I could go that I felt safe and comfortable and not judged to be able to say I'm HIV positive. And part of that was people's perception of women, that they were either intravenous drug takers, that they were prostitutes, um, or immoral in some ways. Now hit me with those lasers, please! Channel 4's It's a Sin has got the UK talking about HIV again. It's led to the highest rate of testing for the virus in history. The show, you know, represents a moment in history, and it is a history, you know, HIV is very different today. For Nathaniel Hall, who plays Donald in the series, it's personal. You were 16 when you first contracted HIV, the first time you had sex. I was diagnosed two weeks before my 17th birthday, and um, I was just sort of coming out as gay at that time. I would grew up under Section 28, which is the legislation that meant schools couldn't talk about homosexuality, so I had no positive representation. That's one of the reasons why I lived in secret about my HIV diagnosis for so long. How did your diagnosis make you feel about your sexuality? There was this sort of narrative in my head that that's, that was growing up in the 80s and 90s, that's what you heard. If you were gay, you know, you got AIDS. That was, you know, that's, that's it, that's what you deserve. It took nearly 15 years for Nathaniel to tell his family, writing them a letter. My mum turned up on my doorstep with a house plant. I was like, why have you brought a house plant? She said, what, what do you bring when your son tells you that? Nathaniel, Yvonne and Chris all say the stigma's been harder to cope with than the virus itself, but it's changing. I really wanted to flip that, that script and go, you know, actually, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, and, I'm, you know, I'm living loudly and proudly with HIV. People are still being diagnosed, still being, yeah, but I think the future looks bright. That's what I want women to remember, the men to remember too, whether you're gay or straight, that once managed, get on with your best life.